Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Wolf. Christopher Hoisington and we're here with Chris Haberman. <laughs> the man and the legend. He's oh, got thanks. to be arguably the most well-known artist, in, artist in, Portland. in Portland right now. Thanks. I can't think of anybody else that comes right off the top of my head. Somebody, sure. asked, somebody asked you today, what are you doing today? I was like, I'm interviewing somebody for our art blog. Like, oh, are they famous? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. We're in the uh, People's Art Gallery of Portland. It's in the top of the Pioneer Place Mall. Uh, it's on the third floor. But it doesn't feel like we're in the mall. No, it's <laughs> this is a really weird mall anyway. I yeah. when this when this thing opened up years what it was like in '84. I stood at the at the. Uh, the doors downstairs in a tuxedo. I was trying to get into modeling. <laughs> right. So I'm this, this scrawny kid in a tuxedo opening the door for everybody <laughs> that came to see, you know, the grand opening of this place. It kind of feels like 1990, 1990 forever here. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's kind of run down now and it's, 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 it's aged. Cool it's, it's, it's aged. It's a little homey. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a very uh, eclectic. It's not your typical Washington Square mall, that's no. for sure. When I got to Portland almost two years ago, the first art gallery that I came to was here, and I, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I, if I was gonna show art anywhere in Portland, like, this would be it. And like, the, it's, it's really great to be a part of the, the Big 100 show. Yeah. Two you, you both are, all three of us are in the show. Yeah. 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 And we were in last year, that was our first year. I yeah. had a horrible experience last year. <laughs> <laughs> My pieces all fell apart. Oh, and, yeah, that's right. And, uh, it happens. Yeah, I, I learned a lot actually. That you know, this is a it's a huge show, and there's a lot of volunteers that yeah. have to handle the art. And well, this show is about learning too. I mean, that's a lot of showing art is about learning. You know, I mean, we work with so many new people. I work with new people all the time. You know, yeah. so I think that's what my partner Jason Brown runs Goodfoot too. Like we, when we started this place, we really wanted to have a really welcome place because, you know, at one point Jason and I were budding artists, and we couldn't find a place to show. And it was horrible, and we hated galleries. And then we started our own, you know. So yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's the whole, all part of what you know being open to art is, because you never know who you're going to meet, or you know, creating a real community is really inviting a lot of people. That's a lot of what we're trying to do with the Art Life Video Blog. Right. Is we're we're trying to showcase artists so so they do get a voice and they like people can see who they are, not just the art that they're buying, but the the character behind the art. Right. And we're, we're trying to com create a community. I mean, Portland has so many artists and... 10,000, they say. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 10,000 so artists. We're good but, but for but the there's next also, it's couple also, years. Yeah. Yeah. There's also segmented. I mean, the city seems to be sort of like you got the Pearl. Right. And you got the first Thursday and you got, you know, and they're all kind of... I, I think there's really artists like... that overlap, but... Yeah, I mean, they do overlap, but... I mean, we're really east side artists that yeah. came downtown, you know what I mean? And there's not First Thursday in the Southwest. Right. So Southwest has always been a weird zone for, there's some galleries here, but you know, and we have our own thing up here. We're at the top of the mall. It's kind of strange to be here, but I think we've gotten pretty used to it. And you, yeah. you've really brought like art into, I mean, it feels like what you've done is sort of art in the galleries in the Pearl sort of seems up here, you know, yeah. and, and most <clears throat> most the general public can't go into those places and buy $2,000 paintings and stuff. And, and but Mark Woolley's next door and he started in the Pearl, you know, yeah. so he was part of the top 10 of galleries and now he's with us, you know. I think the whole outsider art thing has kind of changed so much over the years that yeah. now that's the kind of the, for Portland, man, that's kind of the norm, like that's the cool stuff. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's the stuff that people are buying. I think that our entire mission has just been to go towards not the 5% of people that can afford really expensive art, but have like affordable stuff that is, so, you know, the artist can make some money and it's it's affordable to buy. I recently I heard the, the poor try to sell to the rich mm -hmm. and the rich sell to the poor. Right, yeah, that's totally true. And you, I mean, oh, you're, you're not going to make a million dollars trying to sell your art really expensively like I mean you're in the show you're selling your pieces for forty dollars a piece just right. like everybody else yeah yeah but it seems and to me you, you sold you sold over ten thousand pieces yeah do you feel like that's because of your painting ability or because of who you are I don't know man I think it's a little bit about I mean I've tried to make really I used to do like I used to paint like all sex 
and penis art. Like that was what I did. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd show some place and they're like, I was on some US bank tour thing where my art was at US bank and they pulled it out because my, my piece said, um, the rapist. Mass age, the rapist. <laughs> but it's massage, massage therapist, therapist, you know, and they're like, it says rapist, it can't be in here. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, I took all my art out and went across the, to a bar across the street and I had one, went 500 bucks in video poker. So it was like, I didn't sell anything and I got kicked out of this thing, but I want some money. And then I think at one point I was just like, I want, I want to make really friendly stuff, you know, like, like, the fact that I couldn't show my art to kids was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I wanted it to be friendly, and and I think since then it kind of changed what I did. And I started working with an artist named Jennifer Mercedes years ago. Okay. And her, she changed my color palette, you know, like. So I think the two things between that, I think that stuff helped do it. Plus, man, I've just like, I've hoarded myself out. I mean, I've put my, I've shown everywhere. Yeah. Like right. people say, you, you said I have you nine don't. Shows up right you now. said you don't say no to an opportunity. Never, I never do. I and I donate almost two hundred paintings a year, and that stuff always comes back to me. Like I'll get commissions from that, and people will buy stuff after that. So you know, you give one thing away, but you get tenfold. Where right? do you donate your stuff? Uh, kind of all over, man. I deal with a lot of a lot of homeless things. Um, I mean, there's a little project right now. Where this little girl needs a liver. There's a whole bunch of artists. I think. You know, when there's a charity thing, like the first thing they attack, they not attack, but the first thing they, <laughs> first thing they, people like charity things go after, like, we should have an art auction. So that happens all the time. Yeah. So artists kind of get dinged for that. Like we donate a lot of art, right? But honestly, man, all that stuff is really, being an artist is, it's never ending. There's, it doesn't matter who, how many people know you. There's a lot of people that never will. You know what I mean? And it's not it's, just about painting either. Yeah. I mean, what you're talking about is connecting with people, giving them sure. an opportunity to, to create as well. And, and when kids come out of high school, man, I tell them, don't go to, don't go to art school, you know, go get a marketing degree and minor <laughs> in art because your art school is not going to teach you how to show. It's not going to teach you how to sell art. If you want to do this as a job, I mean, I have this business and communication skills, you know, like, I think that helps out a lot what I'm doing. I never went to art school, you know. I'm painting and drawing the same way I did when I was a little kid. And I think that's part of the appeal. Like, I try to make this really fun art that looks like a kid made it, kind of. But it has skill in it, of course. Mm -hmm. But it also, like, their parents can look at it, you know. And I want to make stuff that you can look at a lot of times. Like, my, the murals I do, is that's a totally different animal, you know. Right. Um, I think I'm constantly experimenting and constantly making stuff. I think the regiment of my business, of the way I, I work day to day, is really how what has made me successful as an artist. I mean, I, I'm banker hours, I cre create every day, I overbook myself, I have 80, 90 shows myself a year, wow. besides everything else putting on stuff. Right. And that makes me create more. And the more you create, the more you learn, the faster you make stuff, and the cheaper I can really sell it for. I mean, I want it to be affordable, man, I want people to buy it. And I have collectors that have 40, 50, I have m multiple collectors that own fit over 50 of my pieces. Yeah, it's awesome. When do you find time to create? I just do it all the time, man. Yeah. I mean, I got, we're in the gallery and I have partners in this and I have a great manager, Jen Berry. And like, there's a lot of people, man. We've really worked hard to have a community yeah. of people that all work together. Right. Um, it's not a co-op here, you know? Like, that's super important. People don't pay money to be part of this. Like, right. we don't have shows where people pay money. This is the very first time we ever asked artists ever for money. And that was just for some materials. It's five dollars. Five bucks, nothing. Man. Never. <laughs> yeah, five bucks. That's it. To be part of, I mean, our marketing. Well, yeah. And there's so, over there's so over six hundred uh, artists in there. Sorry. No, it's okay. Interrupt you? No. Uh, they're filming. Uh, yeah, we're, we're we're doing a little interview with Chris. You right want to say hi? <laughs> you want to say hi? Sure. Yes. All right. The, it's filming over here. So do you want to say hi? Hello. Do you want to say hi? Come on. Say, right say hi. Hi everybody. What's your name? Jennifer. This is Jennifer. And you're an artist? I am. Painter. Are you showing in the, the big 500? No, no, I didn't have any time. I was busy with classes. Busy. Yeah. Super Very busy. Good. Yeah, and I have two jobs. So, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah, multimedia art and animation. Oh, cool. Digital painter. So. Yeah. We pause for one second. Yeah, of course. Uh, I